Hello everyone, welcome to our channel 27CACS. The purpose of this channel is to provide mainframe CACS training. If you do like the content, please like, share, comment, subscribe and press the bell icon. This video is all about CACS transactions, programs and map sets. Yeah, the prerequisites like uh, we have put uh, uh, set of videos earlier so please do watch them uh, in order to be have a better understanding of what we're going to talk in this video yeah the learning objectives of this video are like uh, define C css transactions define programs and map sets and uh, how to load a new copy and uh, you're going to learn a bit of uh, program auto install as well yeah this is a general transaction flow diagram wherein uh, any any uh, example application you can take of uh, where it starts with a transaction and the transaction uh, triggers the initial program and uh, as a program can in turn uh, call uh, multiple uh, set of programs and uh, in case if uh, data required it can reach to a database or a vsum file or wherever you store your uh, data so this is a, a sample transaction flow how it looks like so an application is altogether made of uh, a bunch of programs and uh, it's invoked by a transaction okay what is a transaction resource mean a transaction resource is nothing but it's just a set of attributes okay uh, which relate to the functions provided by css okay and as we discussed in the earlier uh, slide um, and css application is made up of uh, one or more programs which perform a specific business task so in order to invoke that application uh, that particular invocation is called as a transaction and uh, this transaction is identified by a trans id which is up to four characters so you can uh, uh, say like uh, uh, a transaction uh, uh, provides a skeleton uh, for the runtime environment of a task wherein you can specify a lot of attributes like uh, uh, transaction priority storage key and uh, the length of uh, transaction work area as well <clears throat> and you can also link uh, transaction uh, definition to other set of resources uh, in the transaction uh, uh, attribute list uh, for example like you have uh, attributes uh, within a transaction definition like uh, a program profile uh, remote system and trans class these in turn they are uh, another uh, rdo so like you can uh, link uh, them to the transaction audio so that uh, the properties of those audios are taken by the transaction resource definition uh, this is how a normal transaction definition looks like uh, so here in this example uh, we use uh, seda the online method to define the transaction we can use the batch way or other uh, uh, methodologies which we have spoken about in the earlier videos so if you see um, there are few mandate parameters uh, first the transaction itself and the group name where you're going to define this transaction and the program uh, uh, which is uh, required to invoke the logic okay and uh, uh, yeah when we say program like uh, not all programs which belong to application will be specified in the transaction definition only uh, the initial program is m mentioned here in the audio and uh, the rest of the programs which uh, follow the application flow are invoked within the initial program logic itself okay here if you see uh, this parameter task data location will uh, uh, specify where the task life storage has to be allocated whether it's uh, it should be below the line or above the line and um, the task data key specifies uh, the storage key uh, which is used to acquire uh, the uh, task work life uh, uh, storage okay and uh, once you install the 
transaction resource this is how it looks like uh, the first uh, picture shows the shortened form uh, where you can see the transaction name and the priority and the program name which it invokes and it has got a t class as well uh, which is defaulting that means uh, this transaction is not uh, uh, scheduled uh, by a t class okay uh, and the status shows as enabled and it can be pushed uh, and other parameters as well so once you just tab on and uh, expand the definition uh, in cmt inquiry tran so you get the expanded form as shown in figure 2 so here you get uh, some more details in expanded format so sometimes it would be useful to uh, uh, identify some attributes in the expanded uh, display so coming to the program resource, a program resource is nothing but uh, it's a control information okay, uh, for the program which is stored in the program library, uh, which is part of a transaction or uh, uh, as, as, as a set of uh, a part of the transaction. Okay, uh, the, the main attributes a program audio has is the group name is mandatory and uh, the, uh, the language need to be mentioned. <clears throat> uh, the language could be uh, COBOL, Assembler, or uh, you can mention LE as well in case if you are using ThreadSafe or C or PLA, any, any language uh, CACS supports. <clears throat> so the other parameters are uh, reload, wherein uh, you can dictate CACS like uh, uh, any every time that program is invoked it has to be reloaded from the storage okay and the other parameter is resident wherein uh, you can dictate CACS uh, if you want that uh, copy of the program uh, to be resided inside CACS or you want it uh, to be out once the usage is uh, uh, completed and a usage normal and transient uh, once you mention transient so immediately after the usage of that program uh, the storage is uh, flushed off from the memory okay and you can mention the status as enabled or disabled and you can have other uh, uh, parameters like concurrency where you can mention uh, the program as quasi rent or thread safe and you can also if if in case your program is a java based program written in java language you can use uh, the java attributes as the class name and uh, if it is java yes or no that can be very well mentioned okay and coming to the map set resource map set resource is uh, nothing but uh, uh, the screens which we see for our 3270 applications so those are defined by using map set resource the map set resource itself uh, looks like a subset of a program definition by and it looks simple so here it has got a name and the group name and you can mention whether it has to be resident or not and the status how you want it to be installed whether in enable state or disable state that can be uh, very well mentioned and the usage and uh, use lpa copy yes or no also can be mentioned at a map set definition level and here in the second picture i have just uh, mentioned uh, uh, a source copy this is how a sample source of a map looks like wherein you mention the label of the map set name and uh, by using the dfh msd macro and uh, the map name uh, by using dfh mdi macro and uh, the fields the respective fields which are used uh, uh, in in the map uh, in this example like name input and say hi by using the DFH MDF macro and um, the uh, the map is always uh, coded in assembler language and uh, the DFH macros are provided by IBM itself so by using these you can code and generate the symbolic and uh, physical maps and use them in CACS okay once you install uh, the map set and the program the way to cross check or inquire is uh, you can use cmti program you don't have something called a cmti map okay so the program or the map set once installed uh, they appear as a program the difference is uh, here there is a flag which says uh, whether uh, 
uh, the program name uh, is uh, type program or map uh, you can identify based on these um, flags okay and the other details which this screen shows are the length of the module okay and the language in which it is written and uh, the status whether it's enabled or disabled and here there are two counters like resident count and the use count uh, the resident count says um, currently like how many instances of that program is executing at this minute when you issued this command okay and the use count shows uh, the count uh, the, uh, which shows the count uh, uh, which indicates the number of times the program has already executed okay so if if you have a, a resident count or a rest count greater than zero that means uh, an instance of that program is currently running okay so sometimes there could be a requirement wherein uh, you may have to make changes to a program or promote uh, new piece of code whether it could be fixes or enhancements to your code uh, when CSS is up and running so in order to promote your uh, new piece of code okay uh, CSS provides some mechanism to do that <clears throat> that is nothing but uh, uh, new copy okay it can be done by using uh, two commands I mean two options of uh, set program command okay uh, based on your need you can use uh, any of the option for example if uh, uh, the rest count is zero that means the program is not being used by anyone at this minute then you can use this command cmt set program a uh, program name followed by the new copy option itself so in case uh, there are scenarios where the program might be actually used where the rest count uh, uh, in most of the cases will be greater than zero so in that case you can use a phase in option what it uh, does or how it is different from new copies uh, the new instances of a transaction or the new request new transaction request for that program they pick up the new code and uh, the current transactions which are running they keep using the old code once uh, the old transactions are completed then all the instances of that transaction uses uh, uh, the new code okay so that way based on your requirement you can use a new copy or a phase okay so there are few resources where ibm provides this auto install feature that means like you do not have to define that resource but uh, cics will auto install for you but in order to set up that feature, you have to uh, enable few sit pumps, okay? Uh, like uh, program auto install, uh, uh, PG auto install program, okay? Uh, where you can set it to inactive or active. Okay, once you set it to active, that means the program auto install feature is enabled. And um, the exit or the user replaceable module, which is responsible for uh, uh, this feature can be mentioned uh, in another sit pump called PG auto install exit and the default is DFH PG ADX okay uh, and uh, once uh, you have your uh, programs getting auto installed based on the usage okay so when we enable this feature whenever someone tries to invoke a program so only then at that point uh, the program gets installed uh, without a definition uh, being created okay so once um, the uh, program is installed okay if you want that to be cataloged you can mention uh, uh, whatever based on your requirement in this uh, set pump pg ai catalog okay if you mention uh, all every entry which is getting installed or uh, cataloged and if you mention none uh, nothing will be cataloged in the GCD so that uh, next uh, CSS run uh, would be faster and uh, modify only the changed parameters of the install definition will get uh, cataloged okay and if you don't want your own uh, definitions because you have to uh, provide a model definition okay so that uh, uh, this exit takes those model and applies to the uh, program which tries to use it okay and uh, these are a couple of uh, sample uh, or supplied model definitions by IBM if in case uh, for program uh, it, it, it will uh, pick uh, 
PG APG uh, definition and it will apply to the any application programs and auto install them same way for maps and partitions etc as well so uh, this program auto install can save a lot of ma manpower or uh, human hours uh, you don't have to define uh, thousands of uh, program rdos uh, manually uh, once you enable this feature and set the models properly based on your needs then uh, the program auto install can take care uh, in case if you need something beyond uh, the attributes present in these uh, programs or maps then you have to manually define them okay uh, yeah uh, based on your uh, requirement you can enable this feature and uh, use it yeah uh, thanks for watching this video and if you like this video please uh, do like share comment subscribe and press the bell icon and if you have any queries or training requirements please do send an email to us thank you